Welcome to video number one. I want to tell you a story to get started on the right foot. It's a story of a, a woman who's working in several businesses. She has three adult children and recently has become a grandmother, which she's very happy about. But last year, she came to us with a concern. The concern was that she was dealing with sleep problems, and I mean significant, where it was difficult to fall asleep and she was waking up at two or three in the morning, so obviously not getting enough rest. She was also dealing with hormonal fluctuations, hot flashes, as many ladies come to know that, in the middle of the day, in the afternoon. These things were also complicated by the feelings of anxiety over her condition. So this was debilitating, to put it in a word. As we started to analyze her condition and look at the different factors she was presenting with and the diagnostic tests, we were able to determine that a lot of the problem was developing in the cerebellum. I forgot to mention she was also subsequently dealing with some dizziness and weakness in her body. So one after the other after the other, like dominoes, her health was going downhill. As we started to apply the therapies with her and the proper nutrition, she was really taking control of her health. I think I should start out by saying that. And as she was doing these things, taking control of her health, changing her eating habits, beginning with some of her exercise programs that were specific, working with the brain, she started to recover. And I can happily say that now she's back to her lifestyle. She's back to working in those business areas. She's back to spending time with her grandchild, looking forward to these things. Her life has been restored. So you may be wondering, what type of therapies do we do to help someone get restored in their health? when they're dealing with all these different complicating factors? Well, to answer that question, we really have to consider three major things. And it goes from a brain-based healthcare view. The three, the three items are neuroscience, nutrigenomics, and mechanobiology. And when we're considering these things, we start with the brain in neuroscience. To do that, we analyze how is the brain working? And we use specialized diagnostics and technology to know exactly how your brain is doing. In fact, there are modern imaging technologies that are not invasive that help us understand specifically how your brain is working or better yet, where it's not working so well, even before you feel symptoms. The second in the series after neuroscience is nutrigenomics. Now people ask all the time, what is nutrigenomics? And it's specific nutritional approaches that affect the genomics or the DNA of a person's body. This is very precise. So what we consider is blood tests, laboratory results, and we actually go in and turn the proper switches. We talked about hinges, but now we're talking about switches that turn on and turn off things that you want and really the things that you don't want to be expressed in your health. And the third feature in this is the mechanobiology. Now this one is crucial. The mechanobiology has to do with exactly what the word says, your mechanical biology, your movement. Well, what does this encompass? Bones, structure, muscles, fascia, and all these tissues give actual signals into your brain. So if your muscular or mechanical system is abnormal, or aberrant is the way we would say it, this may cause a major decline in your health. So really what we want to consider in this video is the neuroscience. Why is it important to you? Why is it important to me? Well, it's actually at the core of everything. You know, people will discuss hormones or energy levels, fatigue, and as we look at the brain in particular with the new imaging technology that is available throughout the world, we can find out areas of the brain electrically that are not communicating properly, perhaps. And as we do those assessments, the eyes become very important. The eyes have been said, of course, are the window to the soul. Well, the eyes are really the window to your brain function as one aspect. So we analyze all different types of eye movements. And these eye movements can be mapped out and translate into how is your brain working. So let me get back to answer the question. Why should it be important to you, your brain? Because some of the most debilitating disorders from concussions or head injuries and from falls, which are very common as we age, and even in children and young people, to dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, the things that we know we don't want to end up with, these things all develop from the brain. But you'd be fascinated to know that anxiety, depression, uh, all the mood disorders, autism, ADHD, difficulty with learning, all emanate from the brain. But furthermore, your ability to move your body, motor output, to digest food, as I mentioned, the hormones, all begins from the brain, controlling the heart rate. And I can go on and on, but I won't. It's important for you to understand that your brain is the source and the core and the expression of who you are. So we should be paying attention to it. In fact, Dr. Daniel Amen said, 
why do we not do an annual brain checkup when we do physicals every year? And I would tell you that we're coming to that in this modern era. Well, that's enough of the science for a moment. Let me share with you another example. A woman in her late 60s who was into ballroom dancing. She is a grandmother, of course, another theme, very active lady, very careful with her nutrition, taking supplements. Actually, I would say scores very high on the brain body map in health. But she was dealing with chronic lower back and hip pain and neck pain that was 20 years in the making. So she would deal with that through different uh, physical things, stretching. And it was limiting her ability to enjoy her life in her ballroom dancing. So as we started to analyze her, what came out was her history of having a lazy eye, as it's called, when she was a child, which was corrected with many of the techniques of patching and exercises, and she wasn't having any issues. But here's where the eyes come into play. As we analyzed her brain through her eyes, we determined that the brain was still dealing with compensation from that corrected eye movement. And that compensation was causing and contributing to her chronic back and neck pain. Through a series of exercises, we were able to stabilize that, improve her brain function. Not only did her pain decrease substantially and the physical medicine we applied, but her balance and stability, she told me, improved remarkably in her dance. She was able to go on in a fantastic way. So again, the eyes and the brain and the body all connected. So a lot of people today are looking at different brain training games and activities because they already understand it's becoming very common knowledge that the brain is crucial. So from Lumosity and other types of games, crossword puzzles and exercise, these are very helpful and we want to be engaging in them. But we want to be more specific, more precise, because we're talking about brain performance and in fact, your performance. So to understand how to improve a performance, we need to be very detailed in the analysis. So we're talking neuroplasticity. Maybe you've heard that word before. It's how the brain has the ability to change itself. And so we want to analyze specifically, apply proper approaches that are precise to you. In fact, there's very definite ways to improve plasticity. And I'll get into those more in the following videos. One of the best ways for us to really help people either performance or with rehabilitation when it comes to the brain is in short weeks that we call intensives or performance weeks. Much like you would take a sabbatical to relax, this is to help improve the health of your brain that's lasting. So I've included a resource here for you so you can get under the hood, if you will, and understand a bit more about what's going on in your brain currently. In the next video, I hope you'll join me. It'll be about nutrigenomics and how it's affecting your health. See you in a bit.